Hey everybody, it's Ann Clay. And today I want to talk to you a few minutes. I have the fire going on in the background in the tavern. It's a cold day in April and man, that fire is nice. I just had some friends over last night and we had yoga in front of this fire. And then we had a beautiful quiche in here and um, just had so much fun. And the fire was built up beautifully. And so we've decided to just let it go today. So I'm trying to find things that I can do productive by the fire. So um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, life in general because I haven't been on YouTube for a while and I totally plan on getting back into it, but I haven't been doing the work to do that. Uh, part of it was I didn't have a place to set up my computer, so my computer was sitting in a corner. Now it's still trying, kind of waiting for a, an extension cord to plug it into the wall. So that seems really, really lame, um, and it is. But I want you to know that we've been doing a lot here on the farm in the last few months. So uh, let me just backtrack to about November 7 when everything stopped for me. Uh, my sister dropped dead suddenly of a heart attack. It was a terrible, terrible thing. It still is. It's still horrible. I am still in complete grief capacity. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't think of her. I cry. It's, it's, um, yeah, it's really, really hard. She was really close to me. And, um, you know, my mother and my brother are devastated and her, her husband and her children and my kids and all the nieces and nephews and her students and her best friends and, and co-workers, they're, they're all devastated. So um, in that time since she died, what I've done in the house is I had the living room set up as a yoga studio and I was just not able to return to yoga at that point. It was too close to my heart. So I turned the living room into a room full of beds, kind of um, twin beds that I made. And I called it the grief room. And I sat there and I watched Christmas movies for a month and a half. And that's kind of all I did was sit around and watch Christmas movies and hang out with family. And then in January, I decided I had to get my butt up a little bit more. So I started working on things on the house. And so Tom and I started working on the yoga studio. And I have some video about us working on the yoga studio, but I haven't posted it. And then Tom and I made an office room. And I have video on that, and I haven't posted it. And then I went into all the guest rooms in the house to get ready to make it into a country inn. And I went through all the guest rooms and I emptied all the dressers and the closets. And I've been trying to figure out where to put all my stuff. Because when you have this house full of your stuff and then you decide to make it all into a business, you have to take everything out. So I've been working on that a lot, trying to move things around, um, declutter, decide what I want, move things into the shed, organize doing a lot of that kind of thing so that's been taking up a lot of time I have not filmed that I did not think that would be interesting and really it's not that interesting but it was a necessary necessary thing then I went on a trip to California and I visited a friend and I visited my brother and as I was there I suddenly realized that I could turn the stage area of my barn into an artist loft and so we built two big work tables in there and we put homo soap board on the wall and we've uh, turned it into a great place to do art classes and we broke it in last weekend we had a watercolor class in there and uh, the artists that came had things all over the wall and it was just a really great place to work the ladies were drinking wine and painting tulips and the place was just full of flowers and it was really beautiful and we had this group of women this weekend eight women who came they slept in the beds they um we had really good food i served um eggplant and chicken parmesan at night and uh, a nice organic lunch and then in the morning we had coffee and then did yoga and then they had quiche so i've been starting these weekends that have become they're really wonderful i call them women's reset weekends they could be bachelorette parties they could be yoga retreats they can be just a group of women coming together or maybe mother daughter times coming together and you come and you do yoga and you eat good food and you hang around maybe do some art and sit by the fire at night 
and it's been really fun. So I'm going to start advertising that soon. If any of you are local and you want to get involved in that, it's a great thing to do. Uh, so I've been working on that. And then um, what else have I done? I mean, I, I think that might be enough. I did paint a bedroom and turn it into a guest room. I've cleaned up a bathroom. We got a shower curtain rod for the bathtub over the stock tank. We found that on Amazon and it was only $47 and it works really, really well. So we've been doing a lot around this house to get ready to turn it into a business. And what we're doing now, okay, so here's been the, the hangups because nothing can go in an old house without shortfalls. So first of all, um, we had this big group this weekend and everything just went famously and right before they left the pipes in the in the basement overflowed with sewage it wasn't the fault of the people that were here the fault lied in the fact that they were never cleaned out and the scaling had gotten so thick that it had clogged all the pipes leading out to the septic system. So it seems like in a hundred years since they put them in, they've never been cleaned out. I don't know. That's what the guy said who came in here. So we had to have them all uh, routed out with chain kind of things. And now the good news is that the pipes are in really good shape and there's a lot of volume for them to come down. What they were telling us is that with these new toilets, you flush the toilet and there's not enough water volume being pushed through those pipes to push the stuff out. And what we had here was a U shape in the basement that the sewage would come in and it would get stuck on this U and wouldn't be able to get pushed out. And so it would just back up and back up and back up and back up. And it backed all the way up into our room upstairs. So not the sewage didn't come out, but it backed all the way up to that area. So that started to come through and leak. So we had the plumber here to the tune of $2,500 to clean out the pipes in the basement the other day and to actually cut that U trap out of the pipe so that now the sewage would be able to go out. The other thing he said was that we're not quite at the right slope. So once a month, go in with a five gallon pail of water and just push it through to clean those pipes. So that was one big project we did. Another big project we did was we had the electrician in and the electrician came and looked at things and said, man, you have like a million fire hazards here. We had old wiring, we had old fuse boxes with the fuses in them. The fuses, people had put in higher fuses than the wire could stand. So, you know, say your wire is a 10 amp and then you want a 10 amp fuse so that if you trip it, it goes. But then when it keeps going, people get sick of it. So they put a higher fuse in, which means that now you have a fire hazard. So he came in and put all new boxes in. He ran a 200 amp from the street, had to put a nice big box outside, and then had to put two big boxes in downstairs and then replace the box in the she shed. We still have to have the barn done. Um, so that was something that we did to fix the wiring. Uh, the other thing we have is we have a lot of old wiring in the basement that's starting to corrode and you don't want the corrosion to happen. Excuse me, you don't want the corrosion to happen because then what can happen is the um, electricity will start arcing out of there and that could cause a fire. So he said in the walls, you won't have a problem with that, but in those empty spaces in the basement where it gets the moisture, we will. So we have to go in there sometime and switch out all the wires. So you take it out of the box, turn everything off, switch out the wires and rewire them. So that's something Tom can work on. Um, that uh, electrical work cost us four grand. And uh, we had a very nice guy who came and did it, but it was a cash job. So um, yeah, lots of money on there. So we've spent $6,500 on things unseen that needed to be done. That doesn't involve the roof. Uh, the roof and the barn needs to be redone. So we need to get an estimate on that and have that done so it doesn't ruin the barn. And um, then we have an issue in this tavern actually. So I'm going to try to tilt this camera a little so you can see the ceiling up there. If you can see, it's very old and um, wavy and mottled. 
and what's happened in here is we have had leaks and we've we are having a problem with the upstairs bathroom the tub will not drain there's a drum there we can't get to any of the plumbing the only way to get to the plumbing in the upstairs bathroom would be either to rip the bathroom floor out up there or rip this ceiling out so since the water has come through the ceiling twice it's looking pretty ratty at this point I was cool with leaving a ratty ceiling because it's a 230 year old house and your ceiling should look ratty but um I don't like the fact that the waters come through and it could contain mold. You know, it could just be gross up there. So we're going to actually go in very soon and we're going to um, take down the ceiling in the tavern and we'll see what's under it. You know, I suspect it's just the boards from the upstairs room and the joists and maybe some beams. So it might look pretty cool. I wanted to leave it exposed, but then we'd have the problem with the plumbing would also be exposed. So we're gonna have to go in and do that. And that will be an episode that I will be sure to put up online because I think we'll find some things interesting. Another thing we have to do is if you look at this old episode where the sky is falling, Chicken Little, our sky is still falling in that in that kitchen and that's a huge task so we're gonna have to rent a dumpster take down some of these ceilings we may take down the one in the living room we kind of want to leave it but it's starting to fall down and we're kind of thinking if we're taking them down we should just take them all down at once and figure out what we're gonna do with them uh, the problem again is there's a lot of money involved in that and we just don't have it um, We've had the fire marshal in lately, and the fire marshal has given us his recommendations, and well, they're actually the rules that we have to comply with to become a certified country in. So we're gonna need a low voltage fire alarm system that runs all through the house. Those are directly attached to the ceiling, and they're because our house is old and you can't slither it through the walls it's going to be going on top and you know we'll have like a case and i just feel like it's going to look like the matrix so i've been a little bit like hesitant about that even though that's something we have to do um because it goes directly on the ceiling we want to have these ceilings out before we have that put in that that fire alarm system could run four to six to seven to eight grand i you know um again have nothing we got nothing we've maxed everything out to this point um we do not have the money to make those changes to actually bring this up to a business so uh if anyone wants to invest in a business message me um I've been talking to a few people who said, you know, you just really need a couple investors. You give them a percentage of it and then you'll be able to get started and start making the money. I think we've got a pretty good chance for a good business here. Got a lot of good ideas. Um, so that's kind of what I've been working on lately. In addition, I've been working on the website, coming up with a price list, coming up with everything that we're going to need. I've been um, discounting prices the last few months just to get people in while we're not really up and running yet and to kind of get the kinks out of the program and get it going. So um, I think we've got something good going on here and I'm really excited about that. So that's about it here on Quinbrook Farm. I really missed you all. I haven't even been watching YouTube, so all of you faithful followers that watch me and I always watch you, I apologize. I haven't been watching anything. It's it's kind of been a weird time. You know, this grief thing is is really hard. Like, I can, someone's calling me. Sorry. So, um, I've been, I forgot what I was going to say. So I've been able to function to the point that I can really work on the house. And decorating and working on this house has been a place where I can put my mind, put my energies, um, kind of put out of my mind what happened with the loss of my sister 
and go full speed ahead. So it's been a super big blessing to be able to do this. I'm really, really thankful for this house. It's, it's a wonderful place. When I was away on vacation, I was dreaming that my house was sold out from under me and I couldn't come back and I was crying because I love this house. It's embracing. It's I don't know how many of you believe in energy in a house. Um, I don't think I ever would have before. I never thought of it before, but this house has good energy. There've been a lot of great times celebrated here, a lot of parties, a lot of good times, and you can just feel it in the rooms. It's not my decorating. It's the, it's the, all the past of this house and the beautiful things that have happened here and the beautiful people who have lived here and you can feel it here. Everybody says when they come here, this house is full of love, and it really is. So this lovely house, loving, lovely, has embraced me and, and just helped me heal so much. It's just a home of healing. So, um, but I've had a hard time making videos because I've sounded depressed. And, um, if you see me out in the street, you're not going to look at me and say, Oh, she's sad. She's grieving. But when I started to make videos, I couldn't make myself sound happy. I couldn't make myself sound, you know, just even normal. So every time I'd replay the video that I made, I was like, and then I, da, 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 da. and, and I just got depressed listening to it. So I just couldn't publish it. So that's kind of what's been going on here. A lot of work on the house, not a lot of videoing, not any editing and not any posting. So, um, my brother has a YouTube channel. He was able to keep it going through his grief process and he's been going great gangbusters. Uh, I've been a little slower on the draw. I guess I just, it's, it's very emotional for me, you know? Um, it was really hard for me because my sister lived close to me and we were involved in each other's lives and, and uh, you don't expect to lose your little sister. Um, you don't expect to lose anyone. And, and then before you go through grief, you think, well, you know, you get through this little grieving period and then you feel sad once in a while, but you just move on with life. But when it's someone that's really close to you, it doesn't really work that way. It's, it's more, um, it's, it's ever present. It's ever present cloud of sadness that comes over you. And um, it's not just the triggers, it's, it's an, a knowledge that all the time they're missing and um, wishing you could tell them this or that. And yeah, it's hard, it's hard. Any of you who have lost someone very close, you know what I'm talking about. And um, yeah. You don't really ever get over it, but I do feel like I've at least turned a corner that I'm able to not make my videos sound depressing. So if I can get myself together, and I'm not going to promise a new video every Friday from now on, because um, I think it's still going to take me a little while to get things together, and I'm going to have to get back in the mode of videoing and the mode of editing. And the truth is it takes a lot of time to produce videos and get them out there. And it was really fun. Um, but part of my issue is that my sister loved to watch them and I would edit them and my sister would go, Oh man, you did such a good job editing. And she'd laugh and she'd comment and, and it's a little hard to do that knowing she's not going to see it. So, um, that's kind of delayed me a little bit, but I haven't forgotten about all of you. I love you all. Thank you for being my faithful subscribers and watching me and I will be back. So love to you all. Take care. I hope you have a happy Easter and I hope I get this out before Easter. So it doesn't look stupid that I said happy Easter and I have to edit it out. I'm hoping to get on that computer this week and do this. And, um, Tom and I will be back with more episodes for you. So God bless. <laughs>